Disney makes a major announcement regarding the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of the Fantastic Four. I'll dive right into that. But first, hi, my name is Jacob Berry. Welcome to my Studio Jake Vidcast, where I talk about all things pop culture. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And also, with that subscribe thing, I would really appreciate it if you help, would help me out there. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subs. I'm over 960, so whew, in the home stretch here. <laughs> it helps me out. When I get there, I'm going to be doing an Ask Me Anything live stream where I'll be taking questions from the YouTube chat. All right, so diving right into the topic. Now, you might be wondering, why hasn't Disney made a Fantastic Four film already? Well, the fact of the matter is, if you're unfamiliar, which I don't blame you for being unfamiliar, all this Hollywood speak is kind of silly, but prior to Disney's purchase of Marvel Studios, which owns Marvel Entertainment and Marvel Comics, they Marvel had licensed out the X-Men and the Fantastic Four to 20th Century Fox. Marvel you know, could not exactly make a Fantastic Four movie within the framework of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So Disney, under Bob Iger, purchased 20th Century Fox, now called 20th Century Studios, and grafted them onto what they are doing in that film franchise. And it has led to a lot of speculation. Personally, I think that... Disney should have started a Fantastic Four film right away. Now, I'm not a huge Fantastic Four fan. There's a lot of Fs, going to be a lot of Fs in this. I um, know about them because of reading Spider-Man comics, and they cross over with the Avengers a lot. And Mr. Fantastic at one time, along with the Invisible Woman, the two of them were in the Avengers. They ended up leaving because uh, Mr. Fantastic would clash with Captain America and Iron Man about how to lead missions and whatnot. It was a big deal. So, uh, you know, I'm not huge on their lore, but I do know that they have a massive fan base because they're considered Marvel's first family. A lot of people think the Justice League was formed to counteract the Avengers. That's actually not true. It evolved to that over time. The original Justice League had four members, and it was meant to be an answer to the Fantastic Four. It's really interesting history there. Well, now... Kevin Feige, who's the head of Marvel Studios, he recently announced a Fantastic Four film, but we didn't really get any updates of, other than they announced that there is a director. They gave John Krasinski, who people wanted to play Mr. Fantastic, a cameo in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. However, he will not be uh, Reed Richards, who is the Fanta Mr. Fantastic, he will not portray him in the upcoming movie. The word is they're trying to get Adam Driver and a whole other list of things. Now, I have a feeling we're going to be hearing some casting announcements because Marvel has, speaking of announcements, Marvel has announced that they will begin filming their MCU version of the Fantastic Four. So this is from Bleeding Full, which as of today, the recording of this video, it is their uh, birthday, so to speak. So head over to bleedingfull.com and give them a big shout out and a few shares. I actually wrote a birthday message for them. It's on the website. So head over there, bleedingfull.com and check out their content. So this is from uh, John Pallister, one of Ble Bleeding Fool's contributors. It says, while there is no cast yet announced for the upcoming Fantastic Four movie, and it is bound to be another MCU flopbuster, I hope he's wrong about that, but going where Marvel has been lately, he's probably correct. The writers and actor strikes didn't keep director Matt Shakeman from getting some work done on the film, and according to his interview with Collider, they are hoping to start filming early next year. Yes, we are definitely going to go in front of cameras next year, probably the spring. London, Pinewood, we have not been nonstop. Despite the strikes, yes, we've been working with the effects and with the production design and building our world, and that's been incredibly exciting. You know, how do you translate those skills into live action and dynamic ways? Because some things that work beautifully in John Byron and Jack Kirby are a little tougher when you're filming them. How do you make sure that, that things are exciting but also grounded in a scientific thing, which is also a part of Fantastic Four that I love. There's some stuff I'm super excited about. I can't say much, you know. So that's pretty cool. They're um, starting filming next year. Now, hopefully Disney has learned their lesson. They won't try to race or gender swap anyone. They'll actually make the film good. 
and you know have a good sto- a good solid story they'll pay really good homage to Stan Lee, Jack Kirby and John Byron, very huge contributors to the Fantastic Four. In my humble opinion, I think if um, if Shackman is watching this, which I doubt he is, but if he perchance comes across it, I think he should adapt the Fantastic Four season one graphic novel. It is sort of a modern retelling of their origin. It brings them into the modern world, but it maintains the core structure of what makes the Fantastic Four so enduring to nerds and geeks like me. It is a truly well-written story. If I was him, I would adapt that. I wouldn't. Now, elements of it were used in the Fantastic Four where Chris Evans played the Human Torch, so you would have to do some changes there. You might consider changing the main villain from Doctor Doom to Annihilus, And to me, that has been the biggest downfall of the previous Fantastic Four movies is the poor casting of Doctor Doom. What they need to do is get someone who's huge, right? They need to, because Doctor Doom is supposed to be really physically threatening with his armor that protects the, you know, that hides all the scars around his body and all this. He uses a combination of magic and science to. uh, you know, do his evil plots and all this. And he also has diplomatic immunity because he's technically the leader of a country, Latveria. If if I was um, a casting director, I would want to cast someone just for the suit who's huge and then have someone else do the voice work. So someone like Jeremy Irons, you know, who has a deep guttural voice who can really bring it out. They have, uh, they need a European accent, obviously. So, you know, it would be really cool to see that play out, not get some guy who was from an FX soap opera or some random young actor who happens to be trendy. No, you need someone with a good, deep voice who can be physically and verbally intimidating whenever it comes to that. Now, that being said, maybe they shouldn't use Dr. Doom right off the bat. Maybe instead they should use someone like Annihilus or the Mole Man, or even if they want to bring in an Avengers villain that hasn't been presented yet. You know, do something a little newer with the story while adapting something like season one and bringing that origin story to life it is you know a fun thing to think about and of course i'm all there's nothing but speculation about this film i've heard that it's going to take place in the 60s and that the fantastic four are going to get lost in the negative zone and that's how they're going to get their powers i've heard that it's going to take place in the 90s so shortly after captain captain marvel and they're going to be shield agents and experiments with the Tesseract or what give them their abilities. Whatever the case may be, I hope they don't go that route. I hope that they stick with the fundamentals because that is what fans want. Let's be real. We're tired of our expectations being subverted. We want our expectations to be exceeded. That is what matters to us most. And like I, and like I said previously in this video, I do hope that you know they take lessons learned from past flops and that they'll implement those lessons in a wise way while developing the Fantastic Four because I really feel like some fans have been holding on because of nostalgia. I certainly did for a while. I wanted to hold on for nostalgia and Spider-Man No Way Home certainly had me cling on a little bit longer than maybe I should have but I think that with this in mind we're going to see a big shift and it's either going to be Disney doubling down on all the woke content or they're going to start slowly phasing it out. We did see a bunch of people who were part of the big woke movement lose their jobs. People like Ike Perlmutter, who was in charge of Marvel Comics, he let the woke infiltrate the writing and art um, uh divisions of marvel comics he was a really poor leader bob Iger. he championed this stuff because he wanted to run for president boy didn't that was an epic fail but i do hope that with this fantastic four movie they will make it for the fans because i feel and this is just my gut feeling i'm just speculating i think that if they fail on fantastic four this will be the nail in the coffin and the mcu will never recover
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up, that you'll leave me a comment, tell me what you think, that you'll share it out with your friends, and of course, consider subscribing to Studio Jake. I cover all kinds of nerd and pop culture topics, including film, television, anime, comic books, and so much more. I hope that you'll also head over to my main website, studiojakemedia.com, where I have even more news, views, and commentary. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, head over to my Locals page. That's studiojakemedia.locals.com. It's the best way to support me. I'm trying to build a little community there. I have exclusive reviews and articles, so definitely head over there and check it out. And I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.